Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about Hedera being at the centre of a multi-billion dollar industry and what this could mean for HBAR token holders. So before we talk about the main story today, I'd like to show you a clip which features the CEO of ACOA, which is a medical organisation which is built on Hedera, whose CEO, Jim Nasser, going into detail and providing insight in regards to ACOA's provisions and the benefits ACOA's network provides and the benefits ACOA's network experiences due to the platform being backed and built on Hedera's network. You um, speak to, and you obviously alluded to neuroblastoma, speak to how health ready um, tries to change that where, you know, say there is a orphan disease or um, a drug that hasn't been developed for a certain type of cancer. How would this kind of facilitate that and make that easier than what the current process is? Yeah, you know, it is complex without that. And it is without, you know, again, not, not to kind of slighten the operational element. There, there are a lot of, you know, checks and balances, right, for all kinds of good reasons. But there's also a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of redundancy. Uh, and, and really our vision is, can we make it really two things? One, more efficient, and then two, more accountable. And I think that they're they're not really the same thing, right? Just just because you can make it more efficient doesn't mean it's necessarily more accountable, uh, nor vice versa. So you know, when it comes to efficiency, really a lot of it is is things that we know are you know redundant. You shouldn't do you know as example. Why should a patient have to for the eleventh time? pretty much input the same information, whether it's on an, an online form or a kiosk or on a piece of paper. This happens. I mean, this happens to, to you know, uh, kind of regular doctor visits, much less in, you know, in this kind of scenario where there's it's much more intrusive, requires a lot more information, right? And also, frankly, many times um, you don't remember the details. So remembering, you know, the, the exact procedures or the exact medicine you took or any number of other, you know, kind of uh, esoteric details, you know, two or three months down the line, particularly for, you know, like guardians you who know, are dealing with a lot of stress and things like this, in, in practical terms, leads to a lot of errors. So our whole thing really with that is, is capturing information digitally, synchronizing with, with health records where possible, both in terms of connecting to the back end um, health data sources through FHIR, uh, the PATH Healthcare Interoperability Resources APIs, uh, and really uh, with, and specifically with patient consent, because if you don't have patient consent, and that consent is not um, basically up to date. And, and in, it's contextual. So as previously mentioned, ACOA is a software development organization which is geared towards providing support and solving challenges within the healthcare sector where open data, which is apparently available due to the organization's platform being built on Hedera's network. So as I previously mentioned, ACOA is part of the healthcare industry, which within the US amounts to around $750 billion worth of spending on an annual basis. This landing page here on Hedera's website goes into a bit more depth in regards to ACOA's offerings. So we'll start off from here. So ACOA's mission is to enable superior drug development and patient care decision making through model informed drug development, regulatory science, real world evidence and knowledge integration, thus optimizing R&D productivity, commercial value and patient outcomes. So the article continued and stated, one challenge they are taking head on is drug shortages. Drug sh shortages impact lives daily with an average of 198 shortages every year in the United States alone. And furthermore, in addition to ACOA building and enabling tools like Hashlog that utilizes Hedera's mirror nodes to provide historical data and transparency into transactions on the public Hedera ledger. So the main reason as to why ACOA chose to build their offerings on Hedera rather than other DLTs is due to the innate qualities and benefits Hedera's network provides, most notably its cost effectiveness, its finality rates, and also the ability for assets within the supply chain being more visually observable when using Hedera's network compared to other DLTs. And this all encompasses another benefit Hedera's tokenization service provides, which makes it ideal for supply chain actions, where Hedera's tokenization service service allows for the minting of tokens at fixed rates and this is in stark contrast to the vast majority of other networks on the marketplace where for example the likes of ethereum if one 
if an individual wishes to utilize the tokenization service on Ethereum, they would have to pay fees which are related to the amount of traffic occurring on Ethereum at a given time. So it will be harder for organizations or even individuals to keep track of costs if they choose to build their offerings on the likes of Ethereum rather than other DLTs, including Hedera in this example. So Hedera being at the center of such a initiative and with the likes of more industries, including the healthcare sector, transitioning and providing their offerings on DLT. Hedera is taking the first steps in being more widely utilized across a number of industries, which puts it ahead compared to all other DLTs on the marketplace, where the vast majority of other DLT networks on the marketplace are generally only involved in DeFi protocols. They're not really incorporated into any big developments involving any other big organization. So this is the main reason, I think, as to why more organizations are migrating away from competitor DLTs or just general new developers basing their platform on Hedera rather than other networks, generally due to the esteemed organizations which are already based on Hedera. So there's a lot more social proof when such organizations base their platform on Hedera. And furthermore, Hedera is also in collaboration and working with other organizations too, especially again within the DeFi realm, where Hedera has actually entered a partnership or have been working with the interoperability framework and offering Hashport for a few years now, where Hashport, similar to other interoperability frameworks on the marketplace, provides the ability for Hedera to comply and connect with other networks on the marketplace, where Hashport specifically provides Hedera to connect and interoperate with the likes of Ethereum and BNBs, the Binance chain. So interoperability provided by Hashport in this sense allows for a number of developments and use cases, especially, for example, Web3 developers can build dApps on Hedera and deploy smart contracts seamlessly through Hashport to other DLTs, including Ethereum, for example. So all of these innate qualities indicates the versatility offered by Hedera and its offerings, including Hashport, and indicates how the use cases surrounding Hedera's network is becoming more widely integrated into more developments around the world, not just within traditional marketplaces, also within the DLT realm. So again, this, this graphic here goes into a bit more detail in regards to the offerings Hashport provides for Hedera and Hashport and the Hedera team actually authored an article which went into further depth in regards to the connectivity Hashport provides for Hedera to the likes of Ethereum and the Ethereum sidechain Polygon. Where Hashport is a enterprise grade public utility, so it's open source and through the utility of Hashport, networks plugged into its protocol can allow for the cost effective, secure and quick portability of data sets between these varying networks at a given time. So for example, the utility of Hashport in this sense could see the likes of Hedera's consensus and tokenization service being incorporated and integrated into this initiative. So this means that actions surrounding DAP developments or even smart contract creation or tokenization assets could be transported quite seamlessly through the utility of Hashport to other networks which again are plugged into Hashport and vice versa. So for example smart contracts and DAPs present on Ethereum and other tokenized assets could be transported to Hedera as well. And finally the article went to a bit more depth and provided a bit more insights in regards to the adaptability and the adoption of Hedera's network and how interoperability provided by Hashport will make Hedera's network a lot more accessible and a lot more widespread in its utility. And this will add to another reason as to why Hedera's transaction capacity may further increase, where at the moment, Hedera is the most widely utilized network on the marketplace. And a few days ago alone, Hedera's network reached over 18 billion transactions. So with this development as well, this could see more transactions occurring on Hedera's network. And as a result, this will ultimately lead to Hedera continuing to be the most widely utilized network in the world. So another benefit of this interoperability framework is that Hedera's network also provides Solidity smart contract coding. So Solidity is the underlying coding language for Ethereum. So this means that developers who are actively based on Ethereum at the moment could easily transition their offerings to Hedera quite seamlessly. So this may be another reason as to why more developers are transitioning away from other competitor DLTs and basing their platforms on Hedera, where it's just a seamless 
movement of offerings away from the likes of Ethereum to Hedera. So it makes no surprise really, especially if we look at the innate qualities attached to Hedera's network, especially its cost effectiveness, its green nature, and its high finality rate. So all of these benefits are intrinsic reasons as to why more individuals, developers, and even organizations are moving to Hedera. So what does this all mean for HBAR token holders? So with more developments occurring on Hedera across a number of industries, for example, the healthcare industry, and the incorporation and utility of interoperability frameworks, including the likes of Hashport, this will invariably lead to increases in the overall utility of Hedera. And as a result, the demand for HBAR will increase, where HBAR will be at the center of validating and verifying transactions which occur on Hedera's overarching network. And, and in time this may have an effect on the price of hbar especially over the long run and as and as the utility of hedera's network becomes more mainstream and become more significant what are your thoughts on hedera do you think hedera's association with the healthcare industry is bullish for the project let us know your views in the comments below (laughs) 